um, it's going to be coming from our president himself, John Zinger, is going to, uh, who is on the innovative planning um, path, a level two introduction to Toastmasters mentoring, speech title, do or do not. There is no trial. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Obviously, we come here for a reason, and that's to become more wealthy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so come often, Toastmasters. Over the weekend, I went out and saw a movie. And I was thinking as I was watching this movie, I don't think that I saw a single movie during 2019 in the theaters. Oh, how Amazon Prime and Netflix have changed things, right? <laughs> And I'm sure many of you are aware also that the latest Star Wars movie is out right now. Has anyone seen that one yet? Trying to get there. All right, a few of you, a few of you are Star Wars, Star Wars aficionados. For those of you that are not, bear with me. Because this talk has something to do with Star Wars, if you haven't picked up on that as of yet. And I was thinking about Star Wars in general. Star Wars is a series that has been with me almost my entire lifetime. But probably one of the most iconic scenes in Star Wars comes when Luke, the young Luke Skywalker, travels to Dagobah to seek out the Jedi Master Yoda. And he brings his little X-Wing, flies down to Dagobah, lands on the swampy planet that it is, manages to get R2-D2 out of the X-Wing, finds Yoda, and in this particular scene they're all standing as the X-Wing, standing by the X-Wing as it's sinking into the swamp. And Yoda, and, and Luke, of course, is frustrated by this whole ordeal. And Yoda's saying, use the force, my son. Pull it out of the swamp. And Luke's like, okay, it's one thing to pick up rocks with the force. But this is an X-Wing that's totally different. And Yoda's like, no, the only difference is in your mind. Use the force, my son. And Luke then goes, okay, I'll try. And Yoda says, try or try not, do or do not, there is no try. And I have to say that I have plagiarized that phrase from Master Yoda many times with my daughters when they have come to me and said, okay, I'll try. There is no try, do or do not, right? And so Luke then steps forward and starts to use the force. And the X, the, 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 or the, the uh, X-Wing you know, starts to come out of the swamp. Yoda's expression immediately changes. R2-D2 is doing his little squeaky things. <laughs> and then moments later, he gives up. He fails. The X-Wing drops back down into the water. And he then walks back to Yoda and says, I, I, I can't do it. And he then walks back, picks up his little jacket, and plunks down on the ground behind Yoda. And then Yoda steps forward, of course, as we know Master Yoda to be. And using the force, pulls the X-Wing fighter out of the water and places it on dry ground. And of course, R2-D2, he's like, yeah, Yoda's the best. And Luke, of course, jumps up. He goes and he walks around the TIE fighter and expect, inspects it. And then he comes back to Yoda and he's like, I, I just can't believe that. And Yoda said to that comment, that is exactly why you failed. And then we know that, of course, Luke was in this great hurry to get back and save Leia or something. I don't remember the, the details of that. But he ran off and basically kind of annulled his mentorship with Master Yoda. I think that, if again, if Luke knew in that scene, or in, in that movie in particular, just the great opportunity that he had to be taught by one of the masters that maybe he would th rethink his decisions. And I thought about, again, the mentor-mentee relationship, and I thought about the many opportunities that I've had in my own life to <coughs> learn from those around me. And I think that for, for perhaps the most impactful mentor to me was my father. And I, th I thought back about that relationship from a very young age. He taught me many things. He taught me about faith. I mean, as I was growing up, we, we were just expected to be in church every Sunday. I didn't question it. We just went to church all the time. He taught me characteristics, honesty, uh, love, kindness, things along those lines. He taught me about work. I was always expected to do chores. 
On Saturday, we always had to get the chores done before we could watch cartoons that only wow. came on once a week, <laughs> and more other, other things, unlike now. And so I always had to do my chores. And then as I started earning money, my dad was like, okay, well, you need to pay the Lord first. You need to put some money in savings, and then what you do with the rest is, <laughs> is up to you. So he gave me some direction there. He taught me how to ride a bike, which is a skill that I still <laughs> love and utilize even to this very day. He taught me that oftentimes we're not always dealt the cards that we want in this life. I watched him go through cancer for a number of years and battle it without complaint and ultimately lost the battle here a couple years ago. But he stood forth every day faced the next day with, with courage, did everything he could to beat that disease, but in the end, it got him. And I'm just um, incredibly grateful for the many things that he taught me uh, along the way. And I was, as I was thinking about that too, I was thinking about the Toastmasters experience. And I think one of the great hidden gems in Toastmasters is the mentor-mentee opportunity. And I would say, if you leave Toastmasters without taking advantage of that, that you're really missing out on something. And we have opportunities on both sides. If you would like to learn from someone and or get a different perspective, we'd be more than happy to put you with a, a mentor. If you feel like you have lots to bring to the table, even if you don't, we would love for you to be a mentor as well. And so please let us know. If nothing else, maybe that you can learn to have greater faith in yourself like the Master Yoda was teaching us and also learn, do or do not, there is no try. <laughs>